Cape Cod Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. We continue our focus on politics leading up to the general election on November 4th, one of the local contested races is for county commissioner. Some Cape residents may be actually confused about the role of Barnstable County government and how it affects them, and we hope to answer some of those questions, too. Um, on this show. The executive branch of county government is the three-member county commission, and one of those seats is available with the retirement of Bill Doherty. Two people are running for the seat, Leo Kakunas of Harwich and Mark Forrest of Yarmouth, and we'll hear from both of them on today's show. We'll start with Leo Kakunas. Leo, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you for having me. Now, Leo, you have a unique background. Can you introduce yourself to voters? Well, um, once again, as you said, my name is Leo Kakunas. I live in Howich. I'm married. I have a 15-year-old daughter named Evangeline. Uh, we run a farm in Howich. I have 20 acres of cranberry bogs, and we also raise and sell livestock. Um, really, since I moved to the Cape over 30 years ago, I've been very active in uh, in in, in the uh, town government, town of Howich, uh, served on the finance committee for nine years, was the representative to the Cape Cod Commission for Howich, and then uh, subsequently I threw my hat in a political ring and became elected to the Assembly of Delegates, which is the legislative body of Bonstable County, and have been serving in that capacity for the past six years. Now, when you tell people you're running for county commissioner, I'm sure some people may not know what the position does. How do you explain it to people? Well, I try to explain things in the most simplest form possible, and basically the line I use is uh, if you come from a town which most on the Cape do have selectmen, I just basically tell them that the county commissioners are the selectmen of the entire Bonstable County. This race encompasses all the way from Provincetown to Bourne, and basically it's the executive body that sets policy and directions um, it does hire the county administrator, which would be your town administrator, and they do and they are also employed to hire the uh, executive director of the Cape Cod Commission. So it's very, very similar to your town structure, just a little bit larger as far as boundaries go. And why did you want to run for the seat? You had been on the Assembly of Delegates, as you, as you said. Why did you decide you wanted to go to the, the county commission and, and have one of those seats? Well, um, in my tenure uh, as the um, Howitch's representative to the Assembly uh, for the past six years, I have been working uh, on a number of different issues. I've been able to uh, persuade, I guess is the friendly term, uh, the rest of my Assembly members to agree with me on some actions, and we've been moving forward. Um, And I find that the current uh, county commissioners basically are uh, kind of uh, a wall, if you will, or a block. They're not listening to the legislative body of the county. And um, I feel that uh, I'm ready to move up um, and continue to serve the county and hopefully uh, bring to fruition some of those things that I began at the assembly level. And you refer to that there have been some situations where you've actually been able to convince other members of the assembly. And, and as we know, there's there's one representative from each town. And so you've been able to to convince some of them to your side on some issues. What are some of those issues where, where you've prevailed? Well, probably the strongest one and, and the one that really is going to hit home with the residents of Bonstable County uh, has been the movement to restructure county government. And by that, I mean, as you mentioned earlier, uh, there are uh, representatives to the Assembly of Delegates, one from each town, and each member has a weighted vote depending on the actual size of the residents from their town. For instance, I personally have 5.94, I believe, percent of the vote, and someone who's representing Provincetown or Toro could have as little as less than 1% of the vote. And um, there has been a movement, and it's been open in in the public, a number of votes taken to actually do away with that system and um, take away the individual town's representation and make it more of a um, a representative form where, for instance, I'll use my town. Instead of uh, me 
uh, myself uh, representing Howage, and then delegates from Brewster and Wellfleet, East Ham, Toro, and Provincetown, there would just be one person representing all of those towns. And uh, I was opposed to that. I don't think it's a good change for the county government. And uh, I'm not going to say that I spearheaded that um, that opposition, but I certainly was vocal about it. And I believe that my comments did have a lot to do with the uh, rest of the assembly turning that uh, turning that particular ordinance down. Now, we were talking just briefly before we started the broadcast here about um, what role sort of Democrat and Republican politics has to do with the county commission. You had some strong opinions on that. Why don't, why don't we talk about that for a bit? Well, presently, in order to run for county commissioner, um, it is a what they refer to as a partisan seat. You have to either uh, label yourself as a, a Democrat, a Republican, or an independent. Uh, if you pick either a Democrat or a Republican, you naturally have to go through the expense and the time of going through a primary. Uh, I'm sure all your listeners were good voters and turned out uh, on September 9th to the primary. Um, and then once you pass that hurdle, then you uh, get into the general election. Um, I personally feel very strongly that the uh, county commissioners should not be a partisan seat. I do not believe that partisan politics should play into who is going to represent the people of Bastable County at this executive level. Um, I, and I have felt that before going into the race, and I'll have to tell you my experience um, in, in being a politician, because once again, I'm a farmer. I'm not a politician, so I'm a fish out of water here. Um, I, it only strengthened my position that this really needs to be a nonpartisan seat. Uh, and I'm hoping that that may be one of the changes that I will, I'll certainly bring it forward, whether I can convince the rest of my colleagues to agree with it or not, we'll see. But that is one, one thing that I would like to see changed. Now, what do you think are the biggest issues in county government that you would focus on as county commissioner? Do we have three hours? <laughs> I'll do my best. There is so much going on right now with the Bonneville County government that it, I'm serious when I when I need three hours. Um, but really, the key ones is the restructure of county government. We touched upon that a little bit. I did not, and, and I would like to tell you that I do believe that three county commissioners don't work. The number three on any executive board, I believe, is just not. Uh, it, it's not something that works in today's standards. For the listening public, um, when you have two people on a three-person board um, even pass in a hallway and have a brief discussion about an issue, they are, in fact, violating, violating open meeting law because that's the majority of the board. One thing I would like to see is bring forward, and I already have on the assembly level, by the way, through a uh, resolution, to change the county commissioners from three to five and those five would represent an area of uh, Cape Cod very similar to the estate reps do now. This way here, an individual um, wants to run from Howitch. Um, they could just pull some papers out in Howitch, and they would be representing Howitch, Brewster, uh, and all the way to Provincetown, and gathering all the votes from those separate towns and bringing the issues to the table that are important to the Lower Cape. Um, as opposed to maybe the individual that would be representing the town of Barnstable, which, because of its sheer numbers, would possibly end up having uh, either sharing, uh, splitting Barnstable in half, currently the way the um, state rep seat does. But that's one important issue. There's also so much else going on. We have a huge complex down there at the county. Um, I hope your listeners have had the opportunity to go down there for good reasons and not to go there because they had to go to court. But we do own the Superior Court building. We own the um, the building that you go to for the Registry of Deeds. We own the District Court building. And we also have, under our auspice, the Cape Cod Commission, which presently rents a building. Uh, we took over the old jail facility. I don't know if any of your listeners have had the opportunity to go up there and see the absolute extraordinary job that was done in renovating the old gymnasium into the new health department, water lab retesting. Um, that's the kind of thing that I think we need to really look into and possibly moving and consolidating uh, all the facets of county government into one new building. Family court that's located in the Registry of Deeds right now, I've been down there sometimes in the morning, and they're actually holding court out in the hallway. That's not right. We need, they need room, and they need to expand, and we need to give them some room. So I'm hoping by looking at maybe moving some current space that the Assembly is using and maybe some current space that the county commissioners are using in another building, this will free up some space certainly for the family court to use. 
Um, my biggest key word, I think, is going forward has just been transparency. Uh, I've been fighting since the day I was elected as an Assembly Delegates member for more transparency in, uh, in county government. Uh, I, I blame it a lot to basically the, I think people are too busy and just don't care, you know, and they're not really interested. So a lot of things have not been hidden. I'm not going to say that this has been done purposely. But um, there's a lot going on in the county that isn't as transparent as I would like it to be. And um, anyone that Googles me or goes and listens to some previous meetings of the assembly, they will see that that's one of my biggest issues. I want to make sure the public has the right to any information that they want on any subject, especially if it uh, has anything to do with, with, uh, with a governmental body. Now, this year, the town's on the Cape, and you mentioned the Cape Cod Commission. They they voted about whether to uh, remain with the, the commission in, in its current uh, form as to what it does with regard to uh, regulations and helping with planning with towns. Where do you fall on that with the Cape Cod Commission? Well, your listeners have to realize that the Cape Cod Commission is actually a planning uh, department of the county. And state law requires that every community in Massachusetts be affiliated with some kind of a planning agency. And we were lucky enough 20 years ago to uh, establish the Cape Cod Commission and, and earmark that as our planning agency. Um, I certainly don't believe that the action taken to withdraw from the Cape Cod Commission made much sense because if we, if a town had decided to do that, by state law, they would have had to affiliate themselves with another planning agency, and the nearest one to us would have been over the line in, in the Plymouth area. It just wouldn't make sense. I would like to see um, – I, I think we got an awful bang for our buck when we did the uh, – uh, uh, re-looking at the Cape Cod Commission about five or six years ago. A lot came out of that. Um, we now have a new Chapter H, which allows towns to uh, lower the threshold on DRIs. Um, we are working on a nice 208 plan. Uh, but I also believe that it's time maybe to take a little, uh, another look at some of the way, uh, some of the things on how they operate. Uh, DRIs, for example, that's a, uh, a development of regional impact. A lot of people, um, you know, the Lowe's issue is hot on the topic, and I'll try not to belabor this too much, but just to give you an idea, um, the representatives of the Cape Cod Commission, they all show up. There's one from each town, and they all have an equal vote. So that means that the representative from Provincetown and Toro and Bourne had the same equal vote on that Lowe's project as Howitch, Dennis, Brewster, and, and um, uh, Yarmouth did, the actual neighboring towns. I'm not saying my idea is the best one, but what I would like to do is just look at maybe possibly changing the DRI review process to make it um, a little bit fairer maybe and also incorporating the current planning board members, members that have knowledge on planning so that when we look at something like, um, like Lowe's, people aren't voting with their hats. They're actually voting with good information. The staff at Cape Cod Commission does a, a, a yeoman's job preparing uh, uh, these documents, and um, I, I would like to see m people really delve into this one. Well, I know we've just barely scratched the surface, but we've covered uh, uh, several different issues. Leo, thank you so much for coming in today. Great. Thank you so much for having and me. Get out and vote on November 4th, everybody. Unfortunately, we're out of time. I've been talking to Leo Kakunis, who is running for county commissioner in the election on November 4th. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.